Tim, let me start with you. You've now had a chance to see the film a couple times with a few different audiences. What's it like watching, you know, th th this immense amount of time compressed into a film? Well, uh, whenever I see my face, I say, get off, go home. <laughs> but, you know, it's, um, it was a really, really long project. And um, uh, so uh, seeing it in 80 minutes, uh, it, uh, it changes my memory of it, makes it seem like uh, less torture than it actually was. <laughs> Uh, Tyler, we don't, don't always get a lot of uh, chance to, to hear uh, you talk. Um, what, uh, in, in approaching this film, you were dealing with an immense amount of uh, footage, uh, uh, like a, a big undertaking. Uh, how did you deal with all that uh, mass of, of, of stuff in telling the story? Well, we had started with Penn's inspiration to do this as a film, and you know what he, the sentence that he always said was my friend Tim is going to try and paint a Vermeer. And when we, when we realized how much material we had, which was something like 2,400 hours of material <laughs> that, the, that our marvelous uh, editor faced, um, we started to get uh, worried that we didn't have enough clever ideas to, to, um, to frame this. And so we, we started to, we, we began to look at it in various different ways. For me, because Penn had brought me into the story, I thought this was Penn's story. And so we had Penn actually record uh, an entire session of just telling the story about his friend Tim. But when we looked at the material, it didn't seem to land us quite right. So we got, we got other crazy ideas. We thought, well, Tim's a video inventor. Let's present this all like a video game with lots of, lots of graphics on the screen all the time, you know, so you'd see, here would be Tim's life force that would be going down, 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 down as he <laughs> continued to paint the painting. And then we got, a, we got a notion that it might be nice to present it in the, in the style of our American television series, Bullshit, in which um, Penn and I uh, would introduce different segments with little bits. And uh, since Penn had, since the beginning, said this is really like a detective story in some regards, and it's a detective story about a crime that happened long ago, if you think of it in crime terms, um, we, we, we actually staged a whole, a whole session of it that we uh, shot on the streets of London in one of the alleys where Jack the Ripper killed some of his victims. <laughs> and we hired an actress who was lying on the pavement, you know, covered with blood as a, as a ripped whore. <laughs> and, uh, and, we, uh, and we shot this whole thing about these, the long unsolved mystery with Tim as the detective. And then again, we started to look at the footage, and that just seemed strained. And so after lots of, lots of permutations on that and 58 drafts of the film, we got back to the original inspiration, my, you know, my, my friend Tim painted a Vermeer. And that was the biggest, that was the biggest challenge of this, to, to stop out clevering ourselves and just look at the material. And, but also, what's left isn't simple. It, you know, the feeling of it is simple, and I'm very gratified that it feels simple when I watch it. But there's a lot of information that you, the audience, have to know, and we have to kind of slip that in deftly. And that, was, that ended up being a huge challenge, too. And now that uh, Tim has painted a Vermeer, and you guys have recorded it uh, on film, what do you want audiences to take away? Or where, where does this conversation go from here? Uh, you know, I, I like the fact that uh, there's a documentary um, in this time that's really happy. We've spent a lot of time, I guess it's overall the history of documentaries have been to, um, to, uh, to deal with political and social injustices. And I really like that it's a very, very honest documentary that's, that's very personal and completely uplifting. And uh, I think uh, what people should take away from this is, uh, <laughs> you know, I love Tim. And I, I, I kind of like that other people are starting to too. I mean, I think that <laughs> knowing about Tim makes you a better person. So uh, Farley Ziegler, the producer, one of her other credits is producing The Aristocrats. Uh, the, the, I'm sure there's a lot of fans in the house uh, of that. Now, in that film, you were dealing with comedians telling uh, a well-told joke. Uh, Tim isn't a comedian. He's not a, a famous... Uh, a He's an aristocrat. <laughs> uh, what, what, what were your thoughts as a producer of, of Tim as the center of a film? 
I had the great, uh, first of all, I had the great pleasure of being brought on the project by Penn, and my next pleasure was getting to meet Tim, whom I, I didn't know. I got to know over the course of the film, and I particularly uh, got to know him in the seven months that we Skyped every day after his painting sessions were over. Uh, he would, de I would, I would shut up. He would debrief me, I would take notes, and then I would ask him questions. But in the course of that Skyping, I realized he was one funny mofo. <laughs> and um, uh, therefore, he entered the pantheon of aristocrats in two ways, in the original way, as an aristocrat, but then also as a funny mofo. And it was, um, that became uh, the, it was a, not a challenge, it was a joyful uh, task to, the discovery of weaving, I guess we'd say weaving Tim throughout the painting section, the real Tim, his uh, inspired self and his sense of humor, uh, which I, I think is evident. All right, we have time for a short amount of time for a couple questions, quick ones. So uh, who's got one? It's tough for me to, I'm gonna go right down here, this woman right here. Your patience was so impressive. And I think that's why people love you, Tim. That, that Thank you. you know, watching this film, the fact that you had this idea that that you were focused on, and one can imagine the the two thousand days or however long it was. How did you have a life while that was going? On? Well, the question was. Uh, it, it took a lot of patience, and how did you have a life during the 2,000 days? Um, well, uh, it, it was a kind of a shock to my system because I'm a night person. I like to, you know, wake up about the crack of noon and, uh, you know, straggle into work for a while. And with this project, uh, I had to get started early uh, because there's uh, a, a sweet spot in, in the daylight that I had to paint in. I, there was a lot of preparation before each day's painting. So I would uh, be laying in bed and I'd open one eye and if I could see the bedroom, I knew I had to get up. And that, that was a huge shock to my system, but I did get a lot done. And uh, so there, were, there was um, usually uh, about an hour or two of setup time to get the uh, optics arranged right, to get uh, uh, the lighting, correct, uh, to set up the cameras sometimes, and then I could paint for about three, uh, an average of three hours with a lot of breaks, uh, three hours not including the breaks, so maybe four or five hours of uh, actual painting, and then I would lose my light. And then um, I would uh, Skype with Farley for about 45 minutes, so it was really a full-time job, and I feel very fortunate that uh, um, my day job uh, is such that I could pull away for long stretches and, and, and I had the time and resources to do this. It was just a fantastic experience. And, you know, then at the end of the day I would uh, uh, have my family life and um, talk to my wife and, and pet the dog. And, you know, it was, uh, but it was a, a long, long, hard project. I think, uh, one more question. Uh, I'm going to go with this woman right here. What's the value of the picture? What are you offering? <laughs> <laughs> yes, in the um, green. I was just wondering, you mentioned in the film that you were pretty close to stopping. Um, and I'm assuming that the reason you kept going was because of the, the, the film. Um, how close were you to actually quitting? He wasn't going to stop. He wouldn't want to. <laughs> the, the question was, uh, you referenced in the film that you were close to stopping. How close were you really to stopping? Um, as close as you can be without actually stopping. <laughs> um, but it, it, there were all these cameras. At some points there were nine cameras pointing at me. And these guys calling me up on the phone for a conference call every day saying, how's it going? And I couldn't really say, I, I just don't think it's going to work, guys. I, you know. uh, at one point, um, Teller said, you know, if this doesn't work, this is going to be a very different film. <laughs> and I said, if it doesn't work, ain't going to be no film. And he said, oh, yes, there it is. <laughs> and 
And uh, that's a powerful motivation. <laughs> because uh, I, this would be uh, 80 minutes of sheer terror and embarrassment. So, um, I would say, uh, you know, I have a, too many hobbies, and you know, like building a pipe organ, it's about half finished. And uh, Penn put it best. He said, if we hadn't been shooting this film, Tim would have eventually finished, but he may have died beforehand, <laughs> which is different somehow. Uh, well, I can't uh, say how honored we are to have you with us. I want to remember you to vote uh, for this film. You can tip your boxes outside. Thank you very much for coming. There's more great films ahead. Thank you to Farley, Penn, Tim, and Teller. <laughs>